Welcome to the Can of Comedy Podcast. I'm Jerrica yeah. Brooks, your host. I'm Dante Hill. I'm Talon Harris. We have a super special episode today. We have a guest in the house. We got Julio over here. Hell yeah. Woo woo. Julio, Julio Diaz. Diaz. Thank y'all for having me. Yeah. No, I appreciate How you, you doing, brother. Up. This is a good friend of mine. Yeah. You know, first guest. I figured, you know, who who better than the brother, Julio Diaz, man? He's one time, and only. Man. How you feeling, brother? I'm feeling good. I took a day off today. Well, not from work, not from the day job, but I felt like it's nice to take one night off and try to um, recoup type of shit. Cause you be out here, man. It's little by little. How many how many shows you average a night, man? At least What's two. The, at least two, man. That's crazy, man. There's there's people out here, man, begging for shows. <laughs> <laughs> I still be begging for them. That's a fact. I still be hitting them up like, "Hey, I'm available if you need me." Yeah. It's just they need me more now, type of shit. Which is nice. So I guess for everybody who don't know who you are, you want to give them like a quick little breakdown. What um, you do? How long you've been doing comedy? Whatever. I've been doing stand up comedy probably like close to eight years now. Uh, I just did Netflix as a joke. That's my, I that guess, biggest credit fire. today. Shout out to Netflix for having that me for the fire. festival, Man, Joshua. Was this year, really. And uh, yeah, just study on the grind and. Hell yeah, I feel good about it. It's been going great. Yeah, where, good, man. Where Go you from? It. How'd you start comedy? What got you into stand-up comedy? I'm from like at least 10 blocks away from here. I grew up in the south side of Williamsburg. Uh, I've always been to like watching, in, uh, always been into watching stand-up my whole life. I just didn't think I was funny enough to do it. I thought like <laughs> you had to be like, like I used to see y'all pops on, on like, comic view or like watching them on youtube growing up in like middle school and like i thought yo that could never be me like these dudes are special or women whoever i was watching lisa lampanelli used to have me dying too growing up so oh, right. anybody i used to watch i used to think that they was just in a different how old are you bro uh 28 damn so yeah. your influences are kind of before your time yeah well you know like around around 12th grade youtube started really like popping off like 2005 i think it started and mm-hmm. then um 2008 a lot of people were uploading like classic shit. So like, I used to watch like you know, I used to watch the Kings of Comedy, New York Kings yeah, of Comedy. But these nice. are like old tapes that somebody had over the years, and they started uploading on YouTube. So every day, like people send songs to each other. I was sending out different YouTube videos to somebody. Like That's fire. this shit's fire right here. And then um, and yeah, I had friends along the way. Like after high school specifically, they were like, yo. Um, yo, you gotta do stand up. You gotta do stand up. So like for about a year, from 2012 to 2013, after I graduated high school, I was just writing jokes or like oh, thoughts right. I I thought was funny or made me laugh. I used to be like, hey, this shit is this corny. is like iPhone ever. <laughs> <laughs> this is like iPhone ever. You doing this in your notes on your phone, like on your way to school yeah. and shit. Nah, this, so I was I already past school. So like this is like. I went to college for like the first six months after high school, and then I was like, I'm I'm just gonna end up on money. Like I'm not dedicated to this, mm-hmm. mm. so let me just start working if that's the route I want to take. And then um, I had this job delivering auto parts <laughs> for like a good year. Um, six months into that year, though, I just kept getting people. I was just smoking with friends all day, and they were like, Yo, yeah, you yeah. gotta do stand up. You funny for what? Like, come on, like. So I just started writing jokes, and by the end of that year, I got laid off. And I was on yeah. unemployment for like a year and a half. And I just kept writing more. And I was enjoying the unemployment because I was living with my parents. And they were like, figure out what you want to do. You're going to pay for this time. So take that time. You live with us. Figure it out. And I figured I didn't figure anything out. I was just doing nothing. <laughs> just, I thought it was about to get real inspiration. Uh, no. <laughs> no. He was like, yo, and that's when it hit me. Yeah. I, ain't gonna do like, shit. I really ain't do shit. Yo. No, you got to get real bummy before you start getting fly in life. So you got to really. <laughs> that's fake. You got to you know, go through it a little bit. You got to hit your rock yeah. bottom. Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. You got to hit your rock bottom. Hell for yeah. sure. And and then uh, so that's how I got into. Uh, I thought I was a funny character. You feel me? Like I thought in school. <laughs> I can, I can. You was funny in school? Yeah, in school, because I wasn't trying to really crack jokes unless I was trying to roast you, but I was more so like <laughs> improv y. Like, yeah, the teacher yeah. says something, now I'm like doing this character or like I'm doing some crazy shit. Didn't yeah. you say one of your teachers like hit you up or something or like told you like, 
You're just classroom funny. Or yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. yeah, I had a teacher like that. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, that's a wild that's comment. Crazy, that's a right? dream killing comment. <laughs> it was like two and a half years after Disgusting. high school. Oh. I'll never forget. I forgot his name, but I know who said nah, it. He was, like, uh, <laughs> right. he was like, he was like, yo, what you been up at. to? And Word. I was like, oh, um, I, I started doing comedy, stand up. I'm really high. There's a lot of SNL hope one day. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I mean, you was funny in the classroom. You more like teacher funny. You should start looking up teacher jobs. Oh, wow. and, what? Yeah, crazy. Nigga trying to push his dream oh, on you. No. Yeah, 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 trying to make you think practically and such. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's crazy. That's nah, but you gotta up. eat that shit though. Like that's right. You do, you do, man. Yeah, that's like how Chappelle got that yeah. thing where he talked about some people got a brittle spirit. You know, yeah. some people get turned away too easy. Comedy is a really hard thing to uh to commit yourself to too, to growing in a certain way. And I feel like you're one of the ones that when people speak about, they talk about you like almost prolifically. Because even like before you came, you know, even though I'm aware of you through like talent and I've seen you on the gram, you know, I always look, you want to look at people before, look people up before they come through just so mm-hmm. I have like a better idea, better understanding of them. And I've noticed everybody who talks about you talks like the way that you're rising and the way that you're coming up is just, is is like prodigal. You know what I mean? And even me, like I remember when I first saw you um, at a Salsa Con Fuego in my dad's room, like you lit that shit up. And I don't really see a lot of young comics do that, like around my age, you know what I mean? With that mm-hmm. specific type of audience, mm-hmm. with the type of confidence you have, you know what I mean? Like, I gotta feel crazy to have that kind of energy around you. Do you feel that? Um, it's probably more so now than before, but I I really, really try to just, well, not even try, I really just pay that no mind. Yeah. Cause all I remember is the days of like, where nobody wanted to necessarily yeah. talk about you, or That's nobody fast. was willing to be yeah. in your corner, even they, even though they thought you was a nice guy, it was like, nah, you fucking ass or whatever. <laughs> like it is what it is, and I don't blame people, but that's why I don't let it like get to me when people are saying nicer things. Now it's like you're saying over, you're you're just talking about what I'm doing in a sense, and um, it's always going to be like that. That's yeah. why you can't take it to heart, cause uh. They'll talk about you when you're doing bad too. Yeah. So if you're too high all the time, you're gonna hit rock bottom. And like I said, like rock bottom is lit. Not for real. Like not on some like I'm I'm That's talking about some like depressing right, yeah. like, <laughs> like bottom is lit. Feeling low. I'm saying yeah. rock bottom is lit because when you really there, you start to see a how much you have yourself. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. how much you're willing to like just be like, nah, I like doing this shit. I don't care if you think yeah. I'm good at it. Yeah. I don't it's care. It's like you're forced you know? to only see the reality of everything exactly. around you. Right. There's nothing, there's nothing to shroud anything around you. Exactly. And I guess if you can move forward with that understanding when you are up, exactly. you know what mindset mm-hmm. you need to maintain. Yeah, that's dope, dog. Mm-hmm. To have that, especially before like you have any kind of like real meteoric rise. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like if you have that already, you don't have to go through a lot of the bullshit that you see other people go through. How is that for y'all? Because y'all, y'all, y'all used to live together, right? Nah. No? no, I thought y'all were roommates. Y'all used to no. do those Instagram skits together and shit. No, no, no. Like, y'all really we, we shoot a lot of the sketches at my crib. Uh, yeah. So like, oh, I guess I it, it looks I like y'all were really yeah. roommates at a point. But nah, we never lived together. But um, I just I moved to Brooklyn like two years ago. Yeah. So okay. I've been in like I've been like Bushwick area and I'm like Best Style. So mm-hmm. it's like but y'all do a lot of shows together. Oh uh, yeah. 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 So I see y'all. We got a weekly show at Barry Electric every Saturday. Right. Plug that. Plug that. And then we got a monthly show that we're, we're trying to establish. It's going to be bi-weekly soon at uh, nice. Brooklyn Comedy Club. Yeah, oh, nice, nice. nice. A, a dope, late dope. Sunday show. Yeah. But no, though, I want to bring it back. We we hear uh, mm-hmm. he's eating now. Eating you know now, what I'm yeah. <laughs> but um, what, or the automotive job, Mm-hmm. Where, did, where did we go after that? So, okay. Leading well, up to the stage. I got laid off and then I, I was on unemployment for a year and a half and legit like on my last day. And like during that whole year and a half, I was spending a lot of time with people motivating me, like um, outside sources. And um, it was like uh, a friend of mine and his mom who I've known since I was in fifth grade. Mm-hmm. And his mom was like, you know, you're such a, um, you're very like compassionate and stuff. And she felt like I wasn't, showing it to myself and she felt like I was kind of hard on myself. Mm-hmm. So she put me on to um uh the the secret, the movie. Oh yeah. Movie yeah, about yeah, the yeah. yeah. I've heard and of I it. I was dumb high and I, you know, sometimes it's like, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, I was high and and I was willing to accept the change. I think sometimes in life, like you know, you'll tell people the secret or this and that and they're like, whatever you you know, you tell people positive shit, you, they'll either believe in it or they'll either be like, oh, you fucking, you right. fucking high or some yeah. shit like that. Yeah. You know what it is about like positive things? 
even though they be true, it's like it's yeah. facts. Mm -hmm. You just don't want to hear it sometimes. Yeah. Like yeah. when you in a because people go to the yeah. extreme and shit. They're like, yeah, positive attraction, yeah. So yeah. if you telling me, yeah. da -da -da -da, I'm like, no, you're a bum. Yeah. You got to work on that yeah. shit. <laughs> I'm like, talking uh, about like sure. simplistic. Right. Like yeah. I'm willing to like accept yeah. that, whatever. Yeah. So on the last day of unemployment with all that positivity, all that everything, I was like, what am I gonna do? <laughs> I looked up improv oh, classes. Oh. And I was watching uh, Cypher Sounds that whole year and a half. He had a show called uh, Comedy Corner on Hot 97 that he did with Rosenberg. Oh, okay, I remember yeah. that. And he had, I forgot who he Comedy had on, but Corner. he said, I'm starting an improv class. Check it out. And legit, I, the day that he said was that same day. Wow. So then that was for you then. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's for you to Relax. hear. Yeah. Wow. Every time, like hearing y'all say that, when I do mushrooms, that's the first thing. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> Legit. Now we're about to be best be friends. Thanks for bringing was, him. Like, that's fire, though. That's like manifestation. Yeah. No, for real, it really well, is. Hell I look yeah. back and I'm like, yo, if I, how do I like, secret, said no. That's the secret. It's the secret. <laughs> that's, the, mm -hmm. that's the secret. That's the secret. True. No, that's fire, though. So that's how you <laughs> met Scythe. You you Through did you class. you you were listening to it on radio? You saw it on YouTube. Or? I was watching it on YouTube. Yeah, right, right. Wow. Recording it. Yeah, That's I insane. watched when you were on this podcast recently, and he said that you you took that course. That's he remembered circle. you, That's and crazy. he said he felt That's some so type cool. of way because he felt like you were kind of blowing past him. Did you feel that? Did that did that feel some kind of way in that moment to you or whatever? Just because for anybody who doesn't know, Cypher Sounds legendary New York DJ. Um, he hasn't DJed in some years now, but he's made a big name for himself in comedy. He tours mm -hmm. with Dave Chappelle. He's a big name at the at the comedy cellar anybody who in the comedy knows how big of a deal the cellar is mm -hmm. and um you know to be associated with somebody there who looks at you in that way you know what i mean did that feel like something no nah, i feel like it felt like it was nice for me personally like because um i'll never take something like that to heart i was like i was in your class and i was so self-conscious to even say hi to people like i yeah. learned more in that class that like i learned more about being myself in that class than improv or being funny like just like coming into a room and introducing yourself somebody mm -hmm. put like yeah i was watching like just how to break out of that out of my shell mm -hmm. and that's what i got from that class and it was it was very impactful f to me i met friends that because i met them mm -hmm. i started going to open mics because of them and yeah. so i would never like take something like that from Cypher. any if anything that's like a subtle like compliment for me like yeah i'm saying, sure he meant like, it that way mm -hmm. oh Definitely. you trying to you killing me well, I'd, I'd be like yo thank you i'm you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, man. No, that's, that gotta feel that's good. Really that's crazy. That's you good. you go from like just signing up for his class, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and then you go to just being seen as a peer, yeah, Very cool. on, as a circle, guest on the show. Sure. That's fine. Nice. And it's funny here you talk about like how you were just observing how people were talking to people in that environment and everything mm -hmm. because I feel like most of the greats, like in uh, and damn near anything. Like you might not associate certain behaviors with certain activities, or especially when you talk about entertainment. But I feel like to be like a great comic, you gotta like see things, you know, in a very intimate way, kind of all the time. Like you're very animated on stage. You know, you're like really descriptive, like you're like voice wise, like you mm -hmm. channel certain things for certain parts of your material. And I think that's a big part of your appeal. But talking to you right now, I wouldn't know that. You know what I mean? And I feel mm -hmm. like that's that part of your nature kind of coming out on stage. You know what His I mean? style of comedy is battle rap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, word. I guess battle that. rap. That's a dope metaphor. The, yeah. Once I like learned that he likes that's like he likes to he grew up just watching battle rap videos. Yeah. Back. And many a times Back. 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 First time, first time we did acid together. Yeah. I swear to God, I don't think this nigga might have been rapping. Yo, I gotta chill with y'all. Right, he right, might have. Right, right. right. You just be high little bitch. Like Rick and Morty over here. I feel like wasn't. We it went, was one night. We went to my boys' crib to pick it up in Queens. But right? we went to uh, open mic at Crystal Lake. Yep. And yeah, then yeah. after that, we it Dean was, was just like us. I was. I feel like I was house sitting at my boys' crib. We was house sitting at X crib. Yep. It was just a fucking night. We went, <laughs> we went all the way to Queens to get it. Yeah, we did it. Things. Then we was just watching like YouTube videos for like four hours straight. Yeah. Battle rap? Not even battle rap. We was just <laughs> watching was random, watching? just viral video, just, just random music just videos. Nah, Nigga was just rap. rapping like. I that's rap for like. Say yo, I said. <laughs> hey yo. The whole night, yo, hey yo, I said. <laughs> I said. Yeah, I could see it. I could definitely that's see hilarious. it. You got the animation for it. Wow. Who's your favorite battle rapper of all time? Mine, um, it always, it always, you know, changes over the years because I'll, I'll watch somebody new and just appreciate what they bring to the table. I used yeah. to just like, oh, legit, you into it, into it. 
Yeah, I, I like the. I thought you were just gonna say Mooka Lux like off top. Nah, I like the underdog story coming into it. Like yeah. anytime I thought like, uh, what's his name, Iron Solomon, I would oh, watch yeah. him. And I, would, I would like watching his battles because yeah. I'm like, it's clever. He had a different angle. Right, and Matt Hoffa would just it's because somebody like Iron, you could just shit on him so easily, especially in that world. So yeah. I watched this battle with Matt Hoffa. And, and Matt Hoffa said some shit that was like the parquet guy. Yeah, yeah oh, bro, yeah, so playful, but guy. it killed him. And, <laughs> and Iron Solomon, he gotta, he gotta put ideas together. Yeah, yeah. You know, he yeah, gotta he make sure his shit makes sense. Yeah, Meanwhile, he was very Matt pink is like, in that battle. "Hey, yo, I told him I'm going to Home Depot. Yeah. <laughs> you need some bricks or some shit like that." <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. So damn. corny that I was like, "Damn, you I might have to insert a clip." It's on <laughs> YouTube. To. I know yeah. that's, that's royalty. For I you, like yeah. that in battle rap though, where it's like some dudes they'll just be like do this crazy metaphor that connects to this and yeah. then another dude would just be like yo this nigga's ugly yeah, <laughs> yeah bro and the, the so room smart, just goes right? crazy it's, like it's the writing that goes you know what I'm saying it's the delivery yeah. right. that's what stand up comedy yeah. all is bro like, like you have comics like Reggie Cush who does battle rap and comedy you mm -hmm. know what oh, I mean wow. and then you can see that el the element that's of comedy that he brings into the battle rap world but the best yeah. battle rappers are doing that anyway like yeah. a lot of these things set up punchline it's the same thing to each other Work. That's actually um, that's actually uh, what's his name? A hollow the Don uh bar against Charlie Clips. Yeah. He said, "Set up punchline. Set up punchline. F you just a candy rapper. Four bars. What is that? Kit Kat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to insert that clip too. Four bars. I'm gonna have to insert that's that tough. clip as well. That's what he said. He killed him. Well, he moved his head away from the mic like it was his bar. <laughs> Son, I was watching. No. I did mushrooms at the crib. Yo, this nigga be high. <laughs> <laughs> with the with the it's roomies, with the roomies, right? There's a you seen the A Solo one? I think his name is A Solo. A -Solo when he's I like, did. I get four niggas, get oh, fucked. Yeah. That shit, bro. <laughs> so, <laughs> yo, whoa, well, you put that clip on. But there's a video of a nigga <laughs> breaking it down, like on paper. I don't. I feel like we alienated. He was Jericho. like, I don't know I'm, what I'm sorry. Like, yeah. But it's pretty much like a rapper. He did like some like oh, a rapper. He, he a battle he rapper. He did like some some Dr. Seuss type shit. He's like four niggas get five niggas, then six <laughs> niggas get four, <laughs> then four niggas get three niggas, then five niggas bring more. Like he was doing some <laughs> shit like that, right? And Dr. Was he Seuss vibrating shit like that? But yeah, like just pic vibrating. picture a nigga like replying to a TikTok like, "Yo, the nigga said," he brought, <laughs> but he. Wrote it all uh, out like it down, on man. like oh, his wow. white paper. He's like, he's by like, the end of the fight, he brought eighty dudes. <laughs> <laughs> like, how can you win? I'm on <laughs> mushrooms, bro. We watched that video over and over. It's I'm just funny. like, you gotta send me that shit. That's it's funny. Yeah, put that in the group chat. <laughs> but when, I wanted to ask y'all a little earlier. Um, before I forget, y'all because y'all came up so much together. I've I've always been really curious about the uh, the competitive nature in comedy because I feel like it is a competitive sport. Mm -hmm. Just the way comics talk about other comics, mm -hmm. like in interviews, it always seems like there's a little hesitance to show too much love, and like yes. you know with yes. how jokes still in, how big of a thing that always seems to be. Like mm -hmm. the y'all because how close y'all are. Is there any like innate sense of competition that ever gets uncomfortable in y'all relationship because how closely tied together y'all are? I'll let you answer first. Nah, I think honestly, one thing that I think makes us really close friends is that we respect the individual aspect of the journey. Mm -hmm. As much as That's like, fire. you That's know, we're great. close friends, great. like we don't need to be together all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, people are wicked. Like people see like a good friendship yeah, and they'll try to break it up because yeah. it's a lot of, it's a lot of that. It's a lot of people, they come together and they allow this illusion of competition between them to like have an actual friendship outside of it. Like, yeah. if I would have met him working at sanitation, we would have been great friends regardless. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we got along just being friends. Right. I don't even think, like... It's outside of the element of what y'all do. Right. It, That's fly. I think we became friends after a show and not even on some, like, you were hilarious. It was just, like, we vibed, we smoked together, and we yeah, kept yeah. hanging out. We just... Mm -hmm. Yo, you smoke That's weed? It. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those, those are the best ones. <laughs> yo, yeah. Sife? Sife? Yeah, yeah. Yo, um, you like backwards? Nah, I like uh, Fonto. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. How you feel? I feel like... Um, I agree with what he said. Retweet. Um, <laughs> retweet. Retweet. <laughs> but um, I don't know. We just got, in a sense of competition, like when I see him like kill some shit, it just, it makes me like, I'm like, oh, my nigga just ate. Like he just killed, he just killed this spot. Like I, I want to yeah. kill this, my, you know? Right. Yeah. It just makes, 
makes me want to um it's motivation like uh still sharp and still yeah mm-hmm. so i look at it like that like and that's how it should be though it's like yeah. yo, i want to yeah. I was like, oh, shit, my nigga just my that. nigga just dunked it on this. Yeah. Like I'm like, oh, I want to eat too. Yeah. Like, I feel like that only works when you're both like that too. Because <clears throat> right. even in music, like I've had, I'm sure you've had yeah. in everything that you've been a part of, I'm sure that you've experienced it too, where like some relationships I've had with my inclination, like my going up and mm-hmm. things going well for me mm-hmm. creates a space where it's easier for us to have miscommunications about things that right. people that aren't moving at the same speed mm-hmm. and what we're doing is me can interpret certain actions a certain way because of their aggravation with mm-hmm. yeah their progression you know right. what i mean you um, know i feel like if you feel that way mm-hmm. and and you don't have my best interest in heart in the way that i have your best interest in heart then it creates something that i that i can't fix no matter how well intentioned yeah. i am you know what yeah. i mean yeah. and, that, and that's a i feel like that happens more than what y'all have because i know a lot of comics that hate each other yeah but i think it just really goes to like um I think honestly, like people lose their sense of like appreciating what it was for them to begin with. Yeah. So I'll reiterate like how it started for me in comedy. I was a pure fan without any expectation of, I think I can do this. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when I watch talent on stage, I- I'm I'm a fan yeah. with no hesitation. Like that's, fine. that's how the friendship really started. I I wanted to be close to people that I thought were hilarious. I'm like, mm enjoying yeah. their set so like when i see him kill it never does anything to me because i'm there watching it as a fan not oh, i gotta go next i gotta follow this it's like yeah nah and then it's like that with every other comic i meet too though like so to go on the fact that it's a genuine friendship i'm like this with other comics yeah. too where i respect their their craft and like yeah. so any any comic that i ever hear like any competition towards me i already beat you Cause it's like I wasn't even oh, looking at you like that, yeah. And I'm wild supportive, and if that energy got to you, that's on you. Like that's, that's crazy. Fine. I respect that. And then um, t- I think there was something else you had said. Oh man. Oh I um, forgot. yo, <laughs> people don't work on themselves. That's the yeah. basic yeah, thing. Yeah, like, absolutely. That's why you allow somebody yeah. else's blessings to get to you. You. Yeah. yeah. There's a couple of times like mm-hmm. in my life, nobody's perfect. So like. I felt like I couldn't do something, so I, maybe I put external pressure on like my friends, because yeah. I felt like we needed to get it done. And then I would go home and and look at myself in the mirror and said, "I only feel like that because I felt like I couldn't get it done by myself. Mm-hmm. That's something I need to work on." That's yeah. a fact. Yeah, you know yeah, man. Yeah. Some people like I feel like yeah, I completely agree with you. I feel like you're never going to be a completed piece of work for as long as you're alive. And mm-hmm. I feel like there's some people who have a really hard time looking at themselves and kind of reflecting on how certain experiences may have affected them in a way that they move flawed in certain things. You know, because I feel like I, anytime I'm wrong about something, I'm very quick to be like, "Oh shit, my fault." Because then it's like the moment never even happened. Mm-hmm. If I fight it and I and I create a circumstance where I could just look crazy, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm in denial of something that's clearly the case. Mm. Then, you know, I'm creating more damage, you know what I'm saying, for no reason. Facts. You know what I mean? I feel like that admittance that, you know, I can always become better and I will fuck up is necessary, especially in shit like this. No, you Because know, this is a series of bumps and bruises that ultimately gets you to, you know, a space. Yeah. So I feel you, dog. Damn, this is like a Dr. Phil episode. This is going to be hard, good. bro, because I looked at your other interviews, bro. You be having, you be catching vibes and shit, but this is going to be this deep. <laughs> I like this. Well, it's my turn because y'all niggas don't talk the whole time. <laughs> I'm done, I'm done. The whole time. I'm Took done. it to battle I'm rap and everything. I said right here like this. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah, I'm like, can you tell me about the first time you went to a comedy club and was like, I'm really doing this, like the first show you've ever done um, and how old you were, too, because I want to catch that. Oh, yeah, first time going up for doing stand-up. Yeah, for stand-up. Mm-hmm. Okay, so like the first time going up or the first time I went to a show and thought that like I want to do this? Both. There's a both. Yeah. Um, so do the, what made you, what, what was the what was the, the realization yeah. moment and then tell us about um your first experience doing first time, set. your first set. Yeah. Sure. So before I started going to that improv class, I was going to a lot of shows by myself. Mm-hmm. And I was spending a lot of time by myself. And um. that's when I decided like, okay, I obviously want to do this. I'm, here at nine o'clock on a Tuesday by myself, buying two drinks. And then uh <laughs> that word, That's yeah. funny. You know, two drinks. Yeah, two drinks minimum. Dumb broke, like I so I obviously want to do this. What was you getting? Two waters? Yeah. Nah, I got like $30. two Coca Colas and shit. I mean, Thirty dollars for two waters. I just spent ten dollars on a dime and I have no money yeah. left after oh. that. 
And then um oh, oh yeah, the oh the dime is crazy. Oh and the dime is crazy. He doesn't dime have no roll wild, up. He's just like no, yeah. if he hit me up, it was a one point five. Like, nah, I heard the nigga. But um the first time I went up was uh so in the improv class I had met some of my best friends, uh Julio, uh Nick Trinidad. Um I met some other guys too and uh we kinda clicked up and uh it was nice to be around an environment of friends that were into the same thing and Julio had already been doing stand up for like six months, so he was like, Yo, y'all have jokes, so y'all been writing for some time now. We need to go to an open mic. So one day we went to an open mic and we weren't thinking of going up and <clears throat> one of our friends, Tone, he had wrote, wrote down all of our names to do time. Aww. And I was like scared because I did not go with that intention. But <laughs> the secret, I was like, yo, this yeah. just happened to me. Yeah. I got to go with it. And I went up and I did. It was a five minute. And I did a whole five minute one story. Not yeah. even like jokes. like that, that. It's just one story about this girl that I went to high school with. And I was always into her. And. After high school, I was like, I had just enough courage to ask her out. And we meet up, and I'm like, yeah, I felt good about myself. I had lost some weight at the time. But I'm like, yo, <laughs> I'm going to make this happen. Hell yeah. I meet up Hell with yeah. her. She's like, yeah. yeah. I'm so sad, Julio. I'm my boyfriend, da, da, da. I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, no. Nah. And, um, and then it just gets crazy after that. Then she starts telling me that she don't feel like she could be with him because he was just in an accident, and he lost both his legs. And I was like, oh, damn, this is like recent. She was this like, is, this is a real story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And then I'm like, and so oh, then wow. she, I go, damn, this just happened. That's hard, <laughs> right? That's hard. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's great. When I was 20 at the time. So I'm like Real thinking of like, damn, what do I tell her? What I'm thinking about is like what I want, but I'm also like, damn, I feel bad <laughs> yeah. for him. So I'm like, I he guess. never going to walk? Yeah. Oh, no, he lost both his legs. Like, yeah. And I was like, option. I was like, damn, that just happened like yesterday, this week. She's like, nah, it's been like that for like seven months now. Yeah. Oh. And then I was like, oh, so like, and she's like, yeah, you know, we still be having sex. Da, 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 da. I'm like, why she getting oh, why into she all you? Yeah, why she telling you all this? Yeah, man, right? <laughs> nah. Yo, I was so That's a crazy going. level of friends. <laughs> like, what positions? <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah, she was like, how y'all get there? She was Hell like, yeah. you know, she got to basically like put him there. <laughs> oh, Wait, no. the whole time like a toy like, like Stop it. What you mean, put him there oh. but then uh, the whole it's a series of movements <laughs> though so like <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Nah, so it's like it's like like hey, this is something that she told me. So oh was goodness. this story killing? <laughs> what on stage? Talking nah. about <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> oh, this is what you nah. said on stage. Yeah, yeah. Right. I told the whole stack. I'm telling like, y'all right now. Like, he's he's performing the joke right yeah, now. He's doing it right now. This and then good. the the only thing on my head was um, damn, like here I am fucking walking on this date, doing all this shit, <laughs> and this dude got hella yeah. confidence. <laughs> That's the only thing that was on my mind. I'm like, I'm That's over really here. Funny thinking of every excuse possible of why I shouldn't be confident enough to like have this girl there's some dude that just lost both his legs stressing her out like bitch I don't need you what the fuck just fucking hand crawling oh out of it but she told me that part that wasn't me I didn't come up with that and she told me that part no nah, she came up with that shit. no nah, that was her not the ring how did you feel <laughs> uh, <laughs> nah, right. and you were just able to do that off you wasn't prepared for that is that that, that wasn't no, that's something that you I were writing so like up to that point I had already been writing what like whatever's been happening to me mm -hmm. Right. whatever i thought was funny but that was my first time like getting up and trying yeah. to perform it and then i had came up with an ending to it it was so bad but i was oh, confident man. throughout that whole oh. thing yeah like i remember just like not caring yeah but yeah, like in high school on, like, yo, I, I ate that this. shit up though because yeah. in high school like i I was funny, but I was also like on some like I knew people thought I was corny too, and I ate off that shit. Mm. I they, I like yeah, I know you think yeah. I'm corny, but you you mad corny like <laughs> you know, your headline crazy <laughs> or just something that I knew yeah. that person was confident about, right. and I would just try to shit on them. And because it was me, they were like, I did not just get roasted by Julio, no, but I ate Julio. off that vibe my whole life. I yeah. ate off yeah. that shit. Nah, that's perfect. How do you how do you come up with uh, like material? Do like, oh. you like pull a lot from the past? Like I see you talking about high school. Mm -hmm. I would say um definitely life experience, definitely like um conversations is very important to me. So like I feel like a lot of my material just comes from feeling like I got it off my chest. Mm -hmm. So like just having um I have like maybe four or five people in my life that I feel like I have a conversation with them that I'm not 
trying type of shit. Like, yeah. okay. it's just like, I don't really care what I say, how I say it. Mm -hmm. And I get to formulate ideas or I feel like I have a natural reaction to how I really felt. So it's as truthful as possible. So I think about those and I'll write it down. Um, I'm big on like cadence and flow. Mm -hmm. Battle so, rap. Yeah, Battle I'm rap. big on that right. shit. Like you can have the hottest bars ever. That's another thing to Matt Hoffa's credit is like, they played him off some simple bars, but it was the cadence, the delivery, the facial reactions he gave, and the whole performance of it. Mm. Hey, yo, I'm going uptown to get some bricks. Uh, What was it? Oh, I'm going uptown to get some bricks. You need some? You know some people? It's funny you should say that. I was heading downtown to the Home Depot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. like the inclination yeah. of how he said yeah. Home Depot. Like, <laughs> yeah. Little shit yeah. like that is so fire. Yeah. I got good advice from him one time that his dad gave him the mm -hmm. advice about a uh, uh, voice. I don't know if you want to talk uh, about be, that. Uh, the best advice my dad's ever given me is to slow down mm -hmm. and to be dynamic with my voice. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's my dad's shit. He's like, he'll go from here to here yeah. and come back here and go back up here. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I think that's one of the dopest mm -hmm. things about having this platform is y'all being able to like express those kinds of things. Cause I feel like a lot of the um, average consumer of comedy doesn't look at it mm -hmm. as deep as it actually is in comprising a joke and mm -hmm. setting your stage presence up and just the overall of just putting jokes together. People really do still think such an outdated opinion, but there's a lot of people that do really still think like if you're funny with your friends, you're just jumping on stage and doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people are just getting rich off of it. They really mm -hmm. think it's that easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people are really, some people are just gifted. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, just vote, sure. just, some people are funny and they don't know why, how or why, right. yeah. but they are funny. Yeah. And I feel like when people figure out why they're funny, mm -hmm. it's like a superpower. And when yeah. you're on the, like, hone that shit, like, yeah. figure out, like, just, like, figure out how to write a joke. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. That was just one thing I nerded out, like, my first maybe two, three years of doing comedy. I just, I just read just any book I could find on comedy mm -hmm. and just, like, breaking down, like, and just figuring out, like, what's a callback and, like, what is a what is a premise? What is a punchline? Like, oh, like, oh, that's a that's what a tagline is. Yeah. It's like, I used to just hear people yeah. say these yeah. things and just, yeah. just kind of, like, just think that I knew, right. but I'm, like, it's a science, figuring dude. out. I'm, like, oh, that's how, yeah. like... Just like just figuring out like things that you've you've done just instinctually and figuring out what they're called and then figuring out how to recreate them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's nah, just I like do. shit like that. Jericho, when you were uh, when you did stand up, which oh, of these God. um like, which, which of these aesthetics <laughs> did you introduce into your set? It's a callback to a previous yeah. episode. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if you didn't watch the other episode, I did stand up <laughs> when I was 11 and these niggas will not let me look I don't want to let it they go. They bring it back You know why? Because I want to see the footage. And we talked about that last time. I'm and I really want to see that. Shit. Like in real life. <laughs> Do you want really this want podcast to, to go to the next <laughs> level or <laughs> we not? We need that shit. God damn it. We need that shit. But you said, some, you said your dad wrote your stuff. He wrote my jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't remember it too well, though. Was he like, all right, it say it like this. Yeah. Because yeah, he had he to still coach you. He coached me how to do it. But because my nerves, and I was 11 years old, I did terribly. And yeah. it was like a comedy kid's like competition. I did not win. I don't oh, even think. Put you in a Have you ever written? Isn't it crazy? I thought it was just like a. No, it was like a competition. Off oh, rip. He was like, trying to dance they just dumped me over show. there. Like, don't get me. I had no real training before that day. Like, That's fucked yeah. up. Your first time. <laughs> stayed there. But you I lose? will say. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, didn't, I don't even think they even like considered me. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I took those same jokes in audition for Disney. I didn't oh, what? do that either. I don't, it didn't think, I don't think I know about yeah, that. Yeah, same yeah. jokes. You seem like a Disney kid. Even right now. You really seem like I, you came mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. over Disney. I Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah 100%. Got I watched Nickelodeon though too. Oh, yeah. But I was definitely like, I <laughs> could be a Disney star too. Fact. And I used those same jokes. I don't know if they hit there. I can't remember. Have y'all ever written for anybody? Like joke watch? No. No? Would you? Would you be interested in that? Yeah. I might have like just given somebody like, yo, say like, you should say this word instead mm -hmm. of something. Uh, my dad doesn't. I would. Stuff. I mean, 
Shit, if it's a job, hell yeah, I'll yeah. do it. But Are y'all I mean, in tune with that see. world? Like the the comics that are kind of transitioning into that? Because I know some that have, like Namesh Patel. I think mm-hmm. he's like head writer for SNL now. So and we, I remember he was doing yeah. Caroline's and shit, and now to be there. We had like a solid conversation about it the other day. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. it's, work. it's like, yeah, it's just a thing. You have to put yourself out there and you have to just really just be ready for every opportunity. Mm-hmm. So like when I did the Netflix thing, um, you know, you get approached after certain things and I mean, people always tell you these things, so it's, but you really have to capitalize on your downtime. Mm-hmm. Again, yeah. rock bottom is not as bad as it seems because people are not paying attention to you and you need to utilize that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a first impression is everything. Yeah. Yeah. So like when these people come knocking, if you have something ready, they're going to be A, blown away by that mm-hmm. and be like, okay. And if yeah. it's really solid, then it's a go always. That's a fact. Yeah. So, um... You don't have to necessarily be in tune. It becomes undeniable. Yeah. So like, yeah. you yeah. just keep doing your thing. You keep pushing and people mm-hmm. will come knocking. Yeah. And yeah. if you're ready, when they knock, shit is lit. And I think that's what throws a lot of people off of their of journey a lot because that takes a lot of faith. You know, because mm-hmm. what, you're, what you're saying, I completely agree with, but that's just mm-hmm. so much easier said than done. Facts. You know what I mean? Because when you're not getting money, you know what I mean? And when, mm-hmm. you know, you, you have circumstances that you got to meet, <clears throat> you know, it's a lot harder to tell yourself that all I got to do is stay consistent. It's definitely right. going to work out. You know what I mean? Because these aren't careers where you just get a degree in. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And then it's like, now we're going right. to just go to school and get a get a job in comedy. You know, right. you got to hope a lot of pieces align within a certain time frame. And I salute you. I salute everybody that does what y'all do, man. It's, mm-hmm. it's definitely not, not guaranteed. And it's like a very, I don't know. It's just you gotta really create the opportunities for yourself. You it's yeah. like there's no yeah. there's no application. It's the only apply way apply here. It's just like you put yourself mm-hmm. out there, you put in the work and then it's really mm-hmm. a fact. You, yeah. get, you get the gig. Okay. Yeah, I actually have a really fun. good story about staying consistent. So when my dad was coming up, he had a few really good gigs. He was on a roll for a second, then I got a call from SNL to be a writer. And he was like tripping over, like, do I take a demotion and stop doing what I'm doing to just be a writer when I know I want to keep doing stand up and like, you know, keep going that route? Did that for like four or five years. You know, he was just taking a back seat. Some he of was his, writing for SNL. He wrote for SNL for four mm-hmm. years, four or five, almost five years. And he had ended up in LA for a funeral. But that same day, they had a casting for Curb mm. and he went and then he got it. But that oh. was after him, like, just kind of. Taking it, taking a step back, taking the demotion to just write only and not really be on stage like that, not doing any TV, and it worked out for him. Yeah. He just stayed consistent. Like he had in his brain, he knew where he wanted to go. I think that yeah. that break helped him. You know, yeah. so that's a fact. It works. Yeah. That's yeah. a fact. Yeah, no, it's fine. That's a fine story. So your that. biggest credit today is Netflix is a joke. Mm-hmm. What was what was that like? The whole experience? Yeah. Oh, yeah so totally. like, um, <laughs> you just smiling. Like, <laughs> I've been a, I was applying for like, uh, I don't get too detailed, but I was applying for something for like four years, right? I was applying for this, like, it was a competition to get a special on the network. Mm-hmm. First two years, I was like, fuck it. I, I was just putting myself out there type of shit. Like, no expectation. Mm-hmm. That last year, specifically that last year I applied for it, I was dumb tight that I didn't get it because whatever, how I felt, yeah. right? Because in the moment, you really you really take your emotions to heart. But what I'm starting to think is like, I just needed that emotion for fuel to the fire. But mm-hmm. other than that, whatever I thought it was, was an assumption. And it's good on the heart to just not assume anything. But yeah. back then, I was tripping like, I, I'm like, yo, how could, whatever, how could I not get this compared to who you, who y'all, whatever, mm-hmm. pick? So you can say, "Yo, I'm that nigga. Yeah, this nigga's just whack. What the fuck you mean?" Right, and, <laughs> you know, it's just cool. he's okay. He can feel like it's that. It's cool yeah, for yeah. my shit like just that. to put fuel right. in my fire, but <laughs> on some real shit, whatever is meant for me is meant for me, and mm. I, I'm a firm believer in that because yeah. it worked out so much better. That's my mom's right. be telling me like, yeah. because yeah. that special would have been 15 minutes, but that's all I had. Mm-hmm. You yeah. get me? So it's like, and then whatever. I met somebody through that that ended up pushing me for the Netflix thing. Like, yo, I've been trying to get you on for the other thing. Mm-hmm. Whatever, whatever. i am put your name down for this. And I got you an audition date for sure. 
He hooked me up and I told him, yo, I'm going to get this. Like, I was that confident. I was like, I'm going to get this. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no doubt, kid. Like, go ahead. That's your manager now, right? No, this is somebody else. Oh. This is somebody yeah. that just, he works with the people that I was trying to apply for. Mm -hmm. And he's like a producer. And he was like, man, I've been trying to get you. But whatever, certain people in certain places, they just think the opposite of what we think. So we push you for something else, mm -hmm. which I respect because he didn't have to do that. And But he put me down for it. I auditioned. The only thing somebody could ever do for you is give you the opportunity. Yeah. yeah. And I told him, like, yeah. I'm ready to demolish that shit, but that's on me. Thank you for the door. Right. I'll push through. And I had my audition on my birthday. Aww. Oh, wow. Like, how, how much more the secret? How many right. signs yeah. can you get, man? See? <laughs> So it yeah. was lit. He's no, walking so the alignment. That's design, what that's called. Yeah. I had just came back from yeah. doing a whole week in D.C. Mm -hmm. Like my first time going out there on some like, somebody had booked me for three shows. And then I managed to get on like, I turned three into fucking 20 shows. Wow. wow. Like on some awesome. like, I'm not even from that city, just networking and just reaching out to people. And I was like, fuck it. I mean, I, I think I just broke even. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't even a money thing. It was like, a birthday gift to myself. That's beautiful. That's fly, I love you know? that. Yeah. Go on this little solo tour. Yeah. Um, come back. I have this audition. Body that shit. At New York Comedy Club. Shout out to New York Comedy Club. I love it there. Just body that shit. Yeah. Bro, awesome. well, I feel like you're going to really be, you're going to really be good, man. Because mm -hmm. I feel like um a lot of what's kind of catching me in talking to you. I've never talked to you like more than this was up. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I didn't really, talent probably already knows this about you, but I didn't under, realize how much maturity you apply to how you just kind of view, I guess, life overall and how that's impacting mm -hmm. your decisions in comedy. And in understanding that, I guess it makes a lot more sense why you're kind of moving as quickly as you are. Because there's a certain understanding that you just have of what you got to do. Mm -hmm. And and this seems like a, like a comfortability and just a sense of the process that I mm -hmm. feel like I don't even have that in the way that I want to. Cause I, I, I wish I felt more like you with my anxiety. I have so much anxieties and everything, but um, like that mindset that you're expressing is a- mushroom. I feel like that's what you need. It's the yeah. It's it's the the that's what they say, man. The I took the ones you gave me, bro. Yo, I was passed real. out at the cellar, dog. I was at the <laughs> oh olive God. tree. I was on the ball like this. How much did you <laughs> Like 20 minutes, like four, like four balls. It's four bars. Oh, like like, oh. And I had smoke. I had smoke like, a little thing. bit before that. Smoke. I went and picked I went and picked Shorty up and then we was gonna catch a vibe. We figured let's just take a few um. real quick. I was passed out. I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's four is a lot. The actual okay. mushrooms. Was it a lot? It's four. No, four is good. Well, from the like pack that it's good for a time. Because they got the label on the back. They tell you how much you're supposed to yeah. take. Yeah, but for for the first time? No, I split a bar time. with Shorty before. Yeah, half and half. And eight, it was right? still more. Nah, it was like 10. It was still like two little pieces left. It was probably. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It was like a 10 piece word. But I was, was laid it's out. It's the polka so. dot one? That polka dot one. I saw fire. polka dot. I, I don't know if it was like. I'm the You actually saw a polka dot. I saw, your oh, eye. I saw Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> it was wild. It was a wild experience. It was a good night. It was good. Should we but wrap yeah, this bro, up? I really do mean that, man. That's that's really cool to hear that, dog. I mean, people like you, I'm one of those guys who sometimes I need to like before I leave my crib, I need to watch like YouTube videos that's about like positive shit. Wait, you know nah, what, I mean? what did I miss? Nah, 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 nah. The fact that nah, I was trying to wrap up the pod, like but said, oh, so this, this is a good up? nah. This is a good segue. <laughs> Why would you say that? Because this nigga's a big fan of motivational videos on YouTube. Yeah, are oh, you? Bro, oh, you? Like, yeah, bro. Time. I need you need that sometimes. You I need do. that in your spirit. You need a reminder. Less, less time. But I. I'm a big, like... I'm an advocate for that shit. You gotta yeah. look for the answers. And I felt like over the years, That's I was clowning myself with a lot of distractions. And then one day, for whatever reason, I wanted to just start answering shit. Mm -hmm. Instead of just sitting there feeling cloudy, feeling like shit was happening yeah. to me, I wanted to take control. And it's always little by little. Like, it's, it doesn't have to be, you're there already. It's like, right. yo, I kid you not, every, all, all it was just was one decision. And it just and then every time it's just one decision. That one decision to go to the improv. That one decision to introduce myself to the friend that took me to an open mic. To then keep saying yes to it. To then keep saying yes to friendships and and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Yeah, no, I was saying like I do. I watch a lot of not even just motivational videos like specifically, but interviews from you know artists or entrepreneurs that I respect. Just kind of put me in a certain mindset. Just to sometimes remind myself that the way that my my brain, you know, processes 
information that's mm -hmm. conducive toward my progression. I don't know why I'm talking so many big words. It's just the only way <laughs> nah, I can say this. I give it exactly what, what you're saying, though. Yeah, I, I, like, I need that. That's because the, the timeline on Instagram and people I see on the day to day, you right. know, just trying to get to it, you know, trying to, you know, make things happen mm -hmm. aren't good for me. You know right. what I mean? And the more, the more that I'm around that and I don't consume the things that feed my ambition, the more I feel myself falling into that. Cause I'm not like any better than any other person where like my okay. environment mm -hmm. at points That's sometimes like, can bring me back down as far as what I even think I could do. Right. You know, until I'm back around the things that remind me, oh, I am built for this mm -hmm. more yeah. than this. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, I I respect that you do that too. That's fly. I mean, I do think people that move a certain way do have certain weird things like that in common. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like yeah. the same thing with me. Like most of the podcasts I listen to is comedians talking to comedians mm -hmm. about comedy or just like their experience with comedy. So it's yeah. just like, it's just constant, just- Yeah, you put me into that. Just mm -hmm. constant reminder yeah. of like, okay, this is mm -hmm. more like whatever you read, this is like, yeah, most people don't like to read because it's just like school we grew up being forced like to just it. read just random shit that we're not yeah. into yeah. you don't realize that like oh i could i could read a book on um coding yeah. or i could right. read a book on i could consume what you know I what i'm saying yeah. like i could read a book on music or something like right. something like that you that pertains to you that's just yo out of all my friends you're the ultimate example that i could you not like mm. um you put me that's on fine. to watching podcasts about comedy and not saying like you even tried to, <laughs> just saying like, I listen to music too much just to distract myself. And then I started seeing that and what it did for me personally was just hearing people talk about the craft mm -hmm. keeps you in that like learning. I fucking, you started watching videos about how to grow and look at oh, you yeah. now, like yeah. you're the ultimate out of all, like I have few friends in my life now and I, I do that intentionally because I feel like I'm always seeing like, you when you apply yourself to something, bro, you get it done, bro. Thanks for awesome. So that's, that's yeah. I can see how y'all fuel each other. This is so beautiful. Yeah, it's good to have, I especially with men, because I feel like a lot of time, right. like I have a similar relate, like you know, chill. Yeah. Even Lee, you know, a lot of me and my dogs are the same. You met my man Lee mm -hmm. last time, but yeah, like I feel like a lot of men I know are uncomfortable having a relationship where they could just freely show love to each other in that way, right. you know, like without yeah. feeling threatened into their masculinity. And I'm not built like that. Right. I don't do like I even in high school I always told my friends I don't do mom jokes because my mom used to be very sick. And I like that just wasn't yeah, necessary fact. to me and how we play. Mm -hmm. I never did, you yeah. know, SMDs. You know what I mean? I just that's just not my nature. And I don't feel like we need to do that to be cool. You know what I mean? Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. But like what y'all got, I need that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I feel like our generation is, you know, we we more open to that. Like it's yeah. like just telling the bro, like, I love you, bro. I love you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's okay. shit like yeah. that is like You gotta limit how many though. Yeah, yeah that's, it's, of course. It's yeah. like I hit three times in a minute. <laughs> It's on the exit, like, like what, bro? Man, what's happening for real? I feel bad for them sometimes because I be telling everybody, I love you. Sometimes like, the bro like, pack. 30, get that off, 30 bro. times a day, I tell yeah. my guy friends I yeah. love them. But if sure me and Julio, Julio was cool, like, oh, it's cool talking to you. And then, like, we love have a you, little bro. conversation. That would be different if I left the podcast and I was like, I love you, bro. Then on the way out that door, he said it again. I love you. I think you just said it back. Peace and blessings, love, no doubt. Back, back. When your bro drinks. Drunk, like yo, bro, I love you. That's, really <laughs> 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 that's when it really come out. Like, that's when it really come out. Oh my fact. god! So, yo, before we get out of here, yes, quick question. I hope this don't sound too stereotypical, mm -hmm. but I feel like I would like to ask every comic that I speak to this anyway. Yes. Um, do you have a Mount Rushmore of comedians, or like a top top five? Mount Rushmore is four, right? I was about to ask four, how many heads is up there. That's sad. four heads. That's a colonizer. I'm pretty sure it's four heads. Not the colonizer. Four white colonizers. It's crazy. I don't know how many. One, <laughs> it's four. two, it's four. four. Right, three, four. Yep, four. Oh, she looked at She counted with her <laughs> finger, too. I had to count. One. Right. Yeah. <laughs> monument is hilarious, though. Yeah. But do, do you have one? Do you have a... If you had asked me a few years ago, it would have been comedians that inspired me growing up. Mm-hmm. Now my Mount, my Mount Rushmore. Is so do more. two. So do your pre stand up Rushmore <laughs> mm -hmm. and people I that are present day Rushmore. Do it. So like growing up, it was hands down. Um, so it started with Gabriel Iglesias. Just mm -hmm. he was just dumb funny. Then mm -hmm. uh, Louis C.K. Mm -hmm. Two thousand six to two thousand eight. Like, and it was the shit he was talking about too. Like I was real the depressed about being chubby in middle school 
and his self-deprecation at that time, it felt more like alleviating, like, mm. his, like, yeah, fuck it, I'm this and that. Um, and then from there was Bill Burr and then Patrice O'Neill. Oh, that's a fire list. I love yeah. that list. That's a, fire that's a list. good list. And then now I, I cater my Mount Rushmore to the people that I, is inspiring me and I'm learning from because they're like, they're there. Mm. Yeah. So like, hands down, like, and it's crazy. Uh, so um, the New York Kings of Comedy, I saw Mark Vieira on YouTube. Uh, I saw Rob Stapleton on YouTube. I saw Capone on YouTube. And I'm talking about early YouTube days. The only one that I wasn't able to see was like talent. Mm-hmm. So like no funny shit. Like just I, I there was there wasn't on, on YouTube in 2007. There was just no videos that I could find or like not even know. I know what you mean. You I kind of so know what you mean. Yeah. I met him yeah. first. He doesn't have a lot of like stuff. On yeah. YouTube. Like now you there's more. Because yeah. like when eight dollars like, like, was happening, shit. somebody put like, like a, some old Apollo shit up yeah. there. Yeah, now. I I'm seen like, it. I'm watching this shit yeah, like yo. So I met him first, and through him, mm-hmm. I learned of his father. Wow. Yeah. So that's why I like this. Yeah. You know, it's like on some anime shit, like you meet somebody, <laughs> and then their father happens to be this OG that is like, what? Yeah. I feel like I'm a, because of my friendship with him, I, I got into the school of like, it's just comedy type shit. Yeah. Love that. So it's a fly ass at yeah. the end, too. Yeah, this, our friendship game. led to one of my Mount Rushmore's that I would have never thought of. And easily he he put us under the wing like he put us he puts us on shows and he tests us different ways like yeah you're doing ten minutes I bet leave you on stage for twenty to see what you do like yeah. real like teaching shit and That's yeah really dope. so it's th- like he's really catering to y'all growth like specifically yeah he yeah. don't give us too much and it's like yeah, like it's fine. I respect it a lot so mm-hmm. it's definitely his pops. Um, I would say imagine, imagine the imagine. comedian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He really takes me under his wing a lot. Imagine a good guy too. And I um, imagine. my friendship with Imagine started with me seeing him at New York Comedy Club. Another person that I didn't watch growing up because there was not videos of him too much. Yeah. So when I, when I seen him at New York Comedy Club, he was the only Spanish guy on the lineup full of, you know, mostly white people and one black person. So I'm rooting for him, and he was dumb funny to me. And it ended up being like this person that hits me up now, like, Mm -hmm. yo, you free to do my show at Havana? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, that's full circle. Um, Then it's, um, I would have to say, oh man. It sounds like your list changed based on like personal experiences Mm -hmm. with these people. Yeah, because um, it's more not, so the people that I watched, it was, um, my bad, they were, they were people that I <laughs> made me feel good. I'm I, I, crazy. I was trying to cough, but then I ended up slapping the whole thing. Oh, the nigga got to rest. Yeah, but it's easy. I was going to cough, but then I oh, slapped the whole thing. No, you good. You said, my oh, bad. My I, have a, I have a twitch. I didn't want to not be sincere. No. Twitch, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, my okay. oh, yeah. <laughs> It was just people that just uh, made me feel good with their comedy growing mm-hmm. up. And now it's people that I'm learning from. Yeah. Like firsthand. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely them. And then like. That's two. It's hard Talent to think of. Uh, they all dope too. That's one thing. Uh, them internet era kids. Like uh, <laughs> I feel crazy saying that. They're not, they're not going to know about. You know what I mean? So many great comics out here in the yeah. city. No, it's true. I had a oh, dang a dang cook phase. Oh my god, me too. You did? Oh my god, I had a really bad dang cook. And whenever you two hit, you nah, dang cook it. was OD it was funny hilarious. for like a good like three to five years. Yes. You were saying that last time, bro. Dane I cook never is got into dang cook. Yo, dang cook was a funny like. Oh my god. Was he? I, I can't yes. say he wasn't. Because it was like it was just oh like that god. animated like over the top. Yeah. Like, like Jim Carrey, yeah. like I remember, like South know, Park and them yeah. used to hate him. You know, what I mean, that's why I remember. Like, they they, they, they shit on MGs. everybody, though. I know that's what I'm saying. So my, I might have a weird bias because I just remember those when people said shit about people him. People hated him for real, though. But he was selling out arenas and everything, yes. right? So he had to be all right. I got, Dan I got Cook was to him. huge. He was like yeah. Yeah. Nah, he was, Kevin Hart before he was, Kevin. Yeah, Hart. Nah, he was yeah. huge. I remember that ever. I was yep. watching all their like all his like YouTube videos when I was in high school, and it was like animated versions of all his like stand up. I used to be in tears. I what? thought he was fucking hilarious. Like, he it's very like kitty 
comedy though. Like his comedy was like it's very like erratic frat, it's like, very yeah, yeah. frat, very yeah, like bro, but funny. But it was good. It was yeah, like, I, I, I just remember. Yeah, I'm gonna send you a few of my favorite clips. Yeah, send me some clips. I'm gonna see find some between early, like early two thousand, mid two thousand. Like the Burger problems. King one. You remember that one? I don't remember oh it's specific. God. I just remember him just being like just listening to them and just laughing yeah. or, or watching it on YouTube. He always yeah, seemed yeah, like, like moment. you say Jim Carrey, like he seemed like he had a lot of that. Yeah, it was energy. very, it like was just that, it was always the act outs. It was yeah. just big energy, like he would be yeah. doing something He'd like with his body stage. or something. Yep. I just remember that just mm -hmm. aspect. It was yeah. never really yeah. like a crazy, like blow your mind joke. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just yeah. like, this, is, really this is hilarious. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, my last two is, he got he got two more. He's a comedian and Joe Show. Oh, is that a comedian, the singer guy. Yo, Joe <laughs> Show. <laughs> Joe Show. Wow. Joe Show. Yo, Joe you Joe's know what it is about Jay the comedian? He's regardless, he's going to perform. Yeah. Regardless yeah. of how he I know feels. What you mean. <laughs> regardless of how the mood is. Regardless if the crowd ain't with it, yeah, he's going to perform. That's the list of a comic that's in the trenches. Yeah, because I get, like, I get everybody on that list and why they would be there. But it, I feel like that's that's a, that's <laughs> that you would only develop that list with an intimate understanding of what all four of those people are great mm -hmm. at, which is hard to have if you're not around them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Joe Joe Show to me is the ultimate like, like I mean the fact that show is in his name is is literally like. He puts on a show like Joe will host a show. Joe will do fifty minutes. Joe comes up with with games with the audience. Joe will will settle an audience that is not even there for a comedy show. And by the time you come to the stage, you have a chance to get him mm -hmm. when there was no chance. And he's always giving me a shot when nobody was. Talk, I'm talking about putting money in my pocket when nobody was. Mm -hmm. And and I love watching Joe perform because like. Yo, bro, there's some jokes he does where I'm like, <laughs> nobody will laugh. <laughs> Wait. Nobody will laugh, and he knows that. Yeah. And he'll do the joke because it's going to flip you not laughing at it. I'm like, that's confident, bro. Yeah. Like, he'll do a joke, and they'll be like, you don't like that shit? Fucking Jamaicans over here. And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm like last Yo. question before we get you out of here, man. <laughs> What's next for Julio Diaz? Yeah. Um. I would just say more writing, more being prepared for moments, mm -hmm. more organization of my time, and then whatever comes of that was meant to come. Mm -hmm. I don't have no expectations. I have goals, but... I believe you believe that, too. You mm -hmm. feel me? Like, the only thing I want for myself is to, like, really, really put in all the work. I have no distractions in my life. I have a lot of blessings around me, and... I feel like I'm going to capitalize even crazier this year. But I, I had a great year, and I'm very grateful. So. Amen. That was I better than my this. Thanksgiving prayer this year. <laughs> that wow. was fire. Yeah. Yo, thank you for coming thank out, bro. Thank you so much. This was fun. Uh, this was word. Word. That was good for me, too. That was good to hear that. Yes, he needed that one. Word. Appreciate y'all for having me. It's like a live motivational YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. There you go. We're going to put one together ourselves. We're we going to chop it up. <laughs> I think I should start one. It just, <laughs> but like do. bullshit, like <laughs> I'm telling you, like I know times is tough, but like think about it. What's time really? This has been the Kendall Comedy Podcast. Kendall Comedy, we out. <laughs> <laughs>